Some of us, we got a big brain. We got a big brain that captures ideas like this ultimate second brain template in Notion. Now this template is a part of the bigger template, the Notion app system, but I am going to be releasing it as its standalone template on Gumroad very shortly. And if you wanna get this and the rest of my templates for life, make sure to go check out the Notion app system at riceproductive.com and also check out my course on Skillshare, Mastering Notion. There you'll learn the very step-by-step -step process that you can take in order to improve your Notion work right now. So getting things started in this Notion app system tutorial, we are going to go back to the structure page. And if you remember, we do have a database called second brain parentheses DB. So what I am gonna do is go here to a new view and I'm just gonna duplicate this custom view, go inside it. That's because it's already got the navigation bar tied in there. So I'm gonna call this second brain desktop and do a little bit of a brain emoji here. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go back to the structure and open up a new tab and copy the link to this database right here. So copy a link, right hand side over here, I'm gonna press enter, paste this out. And I'm going to make this a list view. All right, so what I am gonna do over here is have this be an inbox. So this is essentially gonna be an inbox for uh, different ideas that I'm having. And then over here to the left, we're actually gonna make a sub navigation bar. So there's gonna be some categories that you can capture different ideas in. This second braid concept is going to be more in line with the idea that it is a capture oriented idea database. Whereas the second brain of other databases may be the overall organization of something in a para methodology. I am going to make an entire template that will be released on its own that is in that sort of frame of mind where like, yeah, you have a project area, you have a resource area and you have that kind of stuff. But for now, what we're gonna do is take this, and we're gonna copy the link to the page, paste it over here, and mention the page. Then we can change this to an I. So it's indicating that this is subviews. And then I'm going to change this to a blue background. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a couple pages here. Uh, so I'm gonna do page, I'm gonna call this content ideas, and you'll see quickly what the categories are. So we're gonna do a little bulb system improvements, or actually a quicker way to build this, sorry, would be if you did the content ideas one, you made it full width, then you go down here, then you just slash call two, nestle this over here. Hopefully you see where I'm going with this. Copy this link, paste, and then now if we duplicate this, at least it'll have this setup in there. Or the last thing you actually do need to do, my apologies, is you do need to make it slash call two within call two, and then you can copy this link within here. Then you go within here, paste this, have the setup start right. And you can also have the sub navigation bar nestled on the top here, if that's a preference for you, or even on the bottom left or on the top left, whatever your preference is. So now I can duplicate this, call this system improvements, which is essentially a captured idea that would improve the systems that you're working with in order for you to uh, basically become more efficient. Then we're gonna have resonance calendar, projects and tasks. I like wrench for that. <laughs> I like wrench. And then archive. We can do a little archive symbol and we can nestle this all within here. And then what I would recommend you do is um, copy the link to this page, paste this out, link to page, and do the same thing for all of these. So in order to give yourself some room, you just like press enter a couple times here. And then let's just copy the links to all of these. And then once these are pasted out all across the board, what you then are gonna do is uh, take take these. I would duplicate this as many pages as there are. So there's the content ideas. That's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then you can take this, slot this into. So then actually what I would recommend you do after you paste these out like that is you slash call out and have that same I right there. Link the page, mention it. And then I would recommend copying this block. And first you can control exit so it gets rid of it off that page. Then slot it in right where that other one was. This was more just like a formatting thing. Then go through the different pages, slot it in right there. And go here, press enter, slot it in, delete the block, and then keep going. And then now what you have is you have a nice little sub navigation bar of the entire second brain capture inbox. Cool. So getting into the core database itself, first of all, you're gonna start with a few basic properties. Created time, tags, and then we're gonna have a checkbox and call it archive. Uh, select property called 
idea bucket, a multi-select property called sub bucket, a tags property, then URL, a file property, an assigned to property, and then even a created by property. So you might be asking, what are the idea buckets? Exactly what we put here. So the idea buckets would be content ideas, system improvements, residence calendar, projects and tasks. And then from a sum bucket perspective, what we can do is we can actually color code these, right? So here are some example ones that I have. Sub bucket wise, we go to content ideas. The idea bucket is like where it is categorized into and the sub bucket is like another layer of that. So we can do YouTube, podcast, blog, sales funnel, quote, book, interests, health setup slash organization schedule. And then you can color code this stuff based off of what it fits into, right? So I can put in all the YouTube one and podcast ones as red, which is like the content ideas. This could be orange. This could also be red. Interests also could be that. Health. It can be set up in a way so that like it's not only capturing the, uh, the reason there's a subcategory bucket here is because like it may not be only for one thing at a time and it may not also only be in one category but the colors kind of help guide you and then from a tag perspective that's just literally just a bunch of different tags i mean i have so many different ones uh that i won't even get into the tags that the whole point of it is like it could be anything from uh, you know a content idea that's a youtube video that's about productivity or whatever it's like you just literally gotta just put extra tags and you can recategorize however you want but now we're gonna make this system even better by having it connect to a couple different things so what we're gonna do is we're gonna relate this to a couple databases we got tasks in this database let's make sure it's this test database NAS, go back into here, relate this to the task database NAS, okay? So we're gonna call this tasks and second brain, okay? And then I always like making these show as minimal. And the next thing we're gonna do is very similar. We're gonna do that for the projects database. I have to do an appended naming convention because my workspace has a million of these named items. So project database NAS, projects, second brain, show as minimal. And there are other later ones that I'm gonna add in the tutorial, but for now, what we're gonna do is we're also gonna add a status property. So this is actually gonna be, sorry, a formula that's called status. And within here, we're gonna set it up so that either it is true that it's archived or it's true that any of these relations are connected. So with that, we'll also have to make status tasks and status projects. So we can do if projects equals blank, then false, else true. So take a look at that formula. I'm gonna copy it. And the whole point is essentially if it's connected to a project, then it's gonna be checked off. If not, it's not gonna be checked off. So we can uncheck off this, then do the exact same thing, paste this in and change this to the name of the other relation, which is tasks. Now, the last step is making an aggregated formula that essentially does status tasks or status projects or archive. And very quickly you can see it would archive it, this would archive it, or this would archive it. Okay. Now, when you get into content calendars and stuff, you can make extra status properties that then allow you to archive what's within here by adding another or to that scenario. But an extremely easy setup can now be made with this second brain concept. So now what you can do is you can filter this to created time is within the last week and status, the overall one is unchecked. And then you can go and rename it to recent ideas and have the properties showcase as the idea bucket and the tags or even the sub bucket too. And then put a divider here. You can duplicate this into all unused ideas, filter this and get rid of the within the past week, duplicate this and then do all ideas and filter this to have nothing. Okay, very basic start. But then what gets cool here is if we do the following. So let's nestle this in here. Let's do a call out block put ideas search, similar to what we did with the other search module in the inbox, I like making this gray. Let's copy this, uh, just one of these views here. And uh, I'm actually gonna turn it into a table and have it show uh, the few properties here that would be sub bucket or idea bucket, sub bucket, tags and status, right? And then this is gonna be called search. And long story short on this one, we're gonna filter this to name and then contains and we're gonna put xx so that if you want to find anything within the database you just go here and change the name to find whatever you want to search for and now what we can do is make a templated setup for all this so if i change this to overview do let's do a globe make this blue and then 
column two. Then I'm gonna duplicate this inbox, paste it here and paste this here. And then I'm gonna make a name and section for each of the idea buckets. And then you were going to duplicate the system and put it within each of the pages. So it's just like a really easy, quick setup. So we got content ideas, a little bulb to signify it's the same thing. And then add a filter to this, that is, and idea bucket is whatever you're under. So for this case, it's content ideas. And you do that quickly for the rest of these. And you do idea bucket, content ideas. And you can dupe this by highlighting both of these, duplicate, and then dragging it over here, changing the name to system improvements, lightning bolt, and then do the exact same thing over and over again. So you just change the naming convention, change the filter, and then it's up to you, but I usually like having dividers under these list views. So I can put a divider here, pro tip, hold alt, and drag the six dots to duplicate like that. And now I'm gonna duplicate this, so it goes below it, duplicate this, so it goes below it, and we can even do something quick like this. We can copy the name, paste it out, change this to a heart emoji. And then from there, we can change all these to Renaissance calendar. And the same here for projects and tasks. And this is just a great way to subcategorize all the different idea captures you have. And you'll see even why in a second that we're doing it like this, because with this setup, you can get very interesting, pretty quick how this all works. So now you have these different pages, right? You have these four categories. What you're gonna do is you're gonna copy this inbox part, go to all the different pages, just put the inbox like call out there to make it easy, just slide it right on through. And then do the idea search really quick. If you wanna pop that in the archive like this. And then you can copy the specific idea link database that you made and go into each inbox and do this. Just copying you know, this six dots, going to system improvements, nice. Just a very simple process of categorization. All right, so then from there, what we can do is, yeah, I'm gonna copy this. I like to have the divider here, my preference, go under all these, put a little divider. And then for this uh, archive one, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take uh, this, copy it into the archive page, paste it out. And then I can uh, say that it, it would probably make sense personally for you to essentially filter this to uh, the all ideas page and then sort of filter it out by category, right? So we can do like projects filtered to idea bucket is projects and tasks, maybe resources, be resonance calendar, system improvements, or sorry, this would be areas of responsibility in Para. Do system improvements and possibly content ideas as well. And then the whole thing itself would be an archive. So then we could do all ideas, have it unfiltered. And also if you wanted to, you can also showcase the status property for each of these so that you can see whether that it was checked off or not. So that's the archive page. And then for all these, it's very simple. What you do is you could go into the blanks place here, do a column two, and then copy the inbox, duplicate, move these around. And then I would recommend that you do essentially this. So you can go YouTube, since the content idea in theory should have a page where you can then assign different things like the sub buckets. So if I were to go here and filter this to not only the idea bucket is content ideas, but the sub bucket is something else like YouTube. And then I did that for every view, right? And some bucket is YouTube and sub bucket is YouTube. This is how I manage this huge content calendar. I just have this like really well filtered system. And then from here, we can also get rid of these properties of showing, okay, we don't need to see idea bucket or sub bucket. Like we can show the status probably because it's in the idea bucket of content ideas. It is in the sub bucket of YouTube. And then very similarly for the other ones, all you do would paste this out, pick something like podcast, do a mic emoji, then filter it to podcast because in this system, it essentially is just sub filtering consistently to what the bottom of the funnel would be so that you can categorize stuff really quickly, connect it to maybe a content calendar and then it would auto archive. But after it auto archives, you can then check the all ideas section since that isn't archived, if that makes sense. I'm not gonna go through every single one here, but you essentially just take these, you make the sub ideas and the sub buckets subcategorized within these different pages and that's where you can capture and store all your ideas. You can do this for any aspect. You can do life, you can do a bucket list, which is a later tutorial I'll be doing, and you can do pretty much any category you want. And this is how you can really hone in on the different ideas that you have. And when the Evergreen Notion workspace, you can 
have it connect to different parts of your life or your business, which is really cool too. Just like it'd be really cool if you checked out this video on how to improve your productivity even more.